tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, when you think about fertilizer, I'm thinking about it all year long. What does my crop need? How much am I going to need to put out there? When am I going to put it out there? How can I do it better this year? It all starts with buying your fertilizer right and getting it at the right price. We're going to talk about when the best time to buy fertilizer just may be. Well, one of the things we're thinking about year round as well is how can we improve our soils? The first step you often need to take is to improve your water management, and that may start with tiling. We're going to talk today about getting ready to tile in the late summer and fall this year. I thought you were going to say the first step you need to do is take care of our weed of the week. That's what we got to get rid of in our fields and even in non cropland. This particular weed is really getting to be a problem. We'll show you how to stop it on your farm, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about riparian areas, what they are, and how you can properly get them set up. Well, many times farmers are accused of, well, they're not doing the right thing for the land. They're just in it for profit. And then you drive around the country a little bit and see what's really going on, especially around rivers and streams. Farmers are doing a lot of things to protect the soil and protect the water quality in the area. Hey, but let's say this though first. Farmers have to make money, otherwise they can't stay in business. But one of the key things is keeping nutrients and keeping soil in the field and not going down into the river. So farmers are working on this all the time. But one of the things that we do see a lot more people doing now is talking about these, what we call riparian areas. So rather than just a buffer between the river and the field, this riparian area is set up to help catch nutrients, help use nutrients, and help stop that soil from getting into the water. So we want to talk about the different levels of riparian areas and some of the different plants that a farmer may put in those. I thought you were going to say farmers are making a great spot for wildlife because that's a lot of times what happens in these riparian areas. You're right by water and not only are we putting grass in and perennial grasses with deep solid root systems to hold soil in place and then filter anything that may run down the hill or run across a field, that grass is going to filter much of that out. But now we're also talking about some small trees, we're talking about some bushes, those kind of plants to try and get in that strip as well, which provide cover for the wildlife as well, which is a nice side benefit, but also stop things from blowing into the stream or moving into the stream with big storms. What many farmers will do is work with their local NRCS in setting up these riparian areas. And just like Darren said, yes, we're going to have grass there, but also when you have bushes, you have small trees, and maybe you have large trees. I mean, it's kind of like the, the same theory of setting up a shelter belt. We want to try to catch some of the stuff and then as we get a little bit closer we definitely want to stop any soil, stop any nutrients from going into the river. So we are seeing a lot more riparian areas that are set up around the country and ideally what we'd like to see is these set up on each side of the river just to help prevent any problems, any issues from happening. But just understand, okay, if you're not a farmer and you start thinking, oh farmers are polluting the rivers and I hear about all this uh, mud in the river and everything else, it must be coming from fields. Look, rivers don't have cement banks, they don't have cement floors, and until they do, we're constantly going to have rivers that are eating out the sides of these banks, and they're literally robbing soil from farmers because they'll keep eating the sides of the banks. That's just the way rivers go. So I'm just trying to say all this in that you understand that, hey, we're always going to have dirt in the river. And until we as a country decide, well, we're going to spend a hundred trillion dollars on cementing every one of our rivers out, it's always going to be the case. There's nothing we can do about that. But what we can do is set up these riparian areas to keep our farm fields from polluting the river. Well, even if we did do concrete in the river banks, Brian, it, we're still going to have dirt because what happens is we're going to get a big rain. And that's really when we're looking at these riparian areas, hey, if we just got a half inch of rain once a week, no big deal. The soil is going to soak it in, the crop's going to use it up, we're going to be just fine. The problem is we don't just get a half inch, we may get a five inch rain that comes in an hour. Well, no system out there is set up to handle that. So all of a sudden we've got more water than can soak into the ground, so it's going to run off over the top. 
and the river is going to go up and the river is going to go down. And these are the reasons that we're seeing some of this river chewing into the sides of the bank and those kind of things. So we've got to do everything we can to try and hold that water back, hold anything that may wash out of the field, whether that's crop residue on top of the ground or whether it's soil or whatever's in the soil and protect things. And that's why riparian areas are so important. And many areas around the country, you can get some governmental help to put the right series of plants out there, the right distance away from the river and all of those kind of things. So you have some good guidance from somebody that has a lot of experience with this. Using riparian areas is definitely something that you want to consider for your farm, but so is great weed control. We'll talk about controlling this week's weed coming up later in the show. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. What if instead of running test plots on 10 acres, you could test on 10,000? With Farmers Business Network, the world becomes your plot trial. FBN is the independent farmer-to-farmer -farmer agronomic network. FBN connects real data from tens of thousands of fields and provides you trusted analysis on hundreds of seeds, practices, and field performance to maximize your profits. Find out how your field seeds and practices compare today by joining the FBN community at FarmersBusinessNetwork.com. Just $500 per year for unlimited acres. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots from Monsanto BioEgg is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more, and is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Get Quick Roots today. It's a humble idea. Use a biological process to turn a plant into a power source. From that idea came the first Poet Refinery. One biorefinery in one town turned into 27 facilities in 27 towns, creating new local jobs, producing hundreds of millions of gallons of ethanol, and providing renewable products around the world. Suddenly, that one little idea seems a whole lot bigger. See the world differently with Poet. Regalia RX Biofungicide activates a plant's natural defense system, limiting the effects of disease and improving overall plant health. Regalia RX complements your fungicide program to optimize yield and strengthen return on investment. Ask your retailer for Regalia RX today. One of the most popular questions we get at Ag PhD every year is, when should I buy my fertilizer? The other popular question is, when should I sell my crop? When is that crop price going to peak out? And I would say to you this, crop prices and fertilizer prices tend to follow each other. So when we see corn price going up to $7, well, that fertilizer price is going to come up to a near an all-time high as well. When we see corn price drop back to $3, well, that fertilizer price doesn't move down quite as quickly as what's going to happen in Chicago with the corn price, but it is going to come down over time. And so you have to kind of look at things as if these two markets are tied together, if I'm marketing corn or I'm marketing the grain that I have in my farm, it's probably the time that I want to market the fertilizer as well. As a general rule, the seasonal low for fertilizer prices is about when the seasonal low for propane comes. It's in the mid to late summer. So we're kind of looking at that right now, but that's the seasonal low. That doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the low over the next eight months before you get next year's crop in. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I do know this. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium are all down off their highs. Here's the other thing I know. There's a certain percentage of your fertilizer that you can probably bank on. Yep, you're going to need a bunch of nitrogen. You're probably going to need some phosphorus and potassium. But one of the big things that we see around the country, farmers are doing a lot more soil testing to try to fine tune the program. Even on our farm, for example, we used to spend similar dollars on phosphorus and potassium, and now we're spending approximately five times as much of potassium as we are on phosphorus because we realize 
realize, ooh, our phosphorus levels are getting pretty good, but our potassium levels are not there. So let's reallocate some of the dollars, stick them where we actually need them, and we're gonna make a better return on investment. Well, I was thinking about this too, of when do you buy fertilizer? I don't even know what fertilizer I need yet. We've got a number of things going on in some of these fields, and we're doing more grid soil sampling to identify where certain problems are and what we can do. For example, we've got one field where we've applied 30 tons of lime to it over the last five or six years. Well, wow, I wasn't thinking about that five or six years ago that, hey, over the next five or six years, we're gonna put 30 tons per acre of lime out in this field. So I'd be thinking, here's what I normally do in the field. Here's what I normally spend. And I guess that's what I would prepay for uh, going into this late summer, early fall market. I don't know, You like Brian was saying, you, you know what you're gonna use for nitrogen in most cases, and maybe to some degree P and K, but you know, with micronutrients and, and some of the other things going on, sulfur, you may really make some big changes on your farm if you're doing grid soil sampling, and if you're willing to do some variable rate on your farm to try to maximize your profits. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you my guess as to what's gonna happen here. I, and again, I have no idea, so this is- So whatever Brian the, guesses, I'll guess the opposite. So. Right, I'm just saying, <laughs> this is for entertainment value only, okay? But here's my feeling on this thing. As I look at it today, and I look at even our own ground, where we're cash renting, we're gonna have a real tough time making money. Okay, so if we as farmers are having a tough time making money, are we really that anxious to go out and buy a whole bunch of fertilizer? No, we're not. So I have a tough time believing that unless the commodity prices go up quite a bit, we're gonna see higher fertilizer prices three months from now than what we see today. So my feeling is on our own farm, yep, we'll probably buy some right now, but we're gonna wait until we soil test and then find out what we actually need and probably buy a lot of the rest then. We really like doing everything in the fall to get the work out of the way. So we're probably not gonna wait till spring regardless of whether we think, oh, the price might come down 10% more by spring. We just wanna get the work done and we wanna do it right. So I, I think we're buying this fall no matter what, but I just don't believe that the fertilizer prices are gonna co go up anymore. I think they're probably gonna hold steady between now and October, November, but they very well might go down just a little bit more too. We'll see, it just depends so much on what happens with commodity prices. Well, fertilizing your crop well also helps that crop fight off weed pressure from weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Wake up, breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a Veil Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. A Veil makes more pee available to your roots, here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a Veil. Lost time and spilled product cost your farm money. The AgriLite conveyor system has one of the fastest product transfer speeds on the market with virtually no spillage. Over 10 feet of horizontal swing gives you the ability to dispense product with precision and eliminates any need to reposition. AgriLite conveyors are designed with ease of maintenance in mind and allows for complete installation or removal in less than an hour. Designed to save you what your farm needs most, time and money. AgriLiteTrailers.com Lightweight, efficient, dependable. Could I boost my potential by foliar feeding? You can. Foliar feeding can correct nutrient deficiencies and sustain your crop through stress. It's a great way to deliver nutrients that your crop lacks to reach its full potential. Research proves it. Applied alone or in combination with your crop protection program, AgroLiquid products assure that when the season presents opportunity, you can boost your crop's yield potential by foliar feeding. For more info, visit agroliquid.com. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leaders and Teleslope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with Soil Max. 
Visit SoilMax.com. Got a call this summer on the Ag PhD radio program, and the farmer said, "All right, can you help me solve my soil issue here? I've got a fertility problem." And we said, "Sure, let's let's talk through it. What's going on in the field?" And he said, "Well, you know, I've got a high pH. I've got a high level of salts. Uh, I've got you know an issue in the part of the field. Well, I know I need drainage, but..." In the absence of drainage, what can I do to fix all this stuff? And you know what? There's nothing you can do. How are you going to get your pH to come down long term without doing drainage? And we think about the economic return on investment on every input that we put into our fields. The economic return on drainage tile may be the best of all. Well, the reason why we're talking about this today is going into the late summer and into the fall, you're going to have some opportunity, hopefully, to get some tile in the ground. And you got to get started on this today. Because if you want to tile two months from now, there's a little process here. You might have to have NRCS come out and actually do some wetland determinations. You might have to be talking to your neighbors. You might have to get some approvals from highway departments or watershed districts. All those things kind of take time and they take some work. And I guess my biggest piece of advice is to say this. It's absolutely worth your time. I spent about three years of my life talking with neighbors and working with highway departments, getting approvals walking a lot of fields, doing all this kind of stuff, and we're reaping the rewards now big time. It's just unbelievable how much our yield has increased once we've gotten the tile in the ground. Because here's the thing, anything else you do, I don't care if it's fertility, weed control, bug control, picking the right hybrids, all these other things that people talk about, oh, you gotta do this and you'll have more yield and profit, this and you'll have more yield and profit. You look at the high yield guys in the country, yeah, I'm doing this, this, and this. None of that stuff pays very well. If you don't have good drainage, you have to get the tile in the ground. You have to have good soil health. You have to have more oxygen in the soil. You got to get some tile out there and it'll make an enormous difference for you. This spring was another great example of how tile was going to pay. I talked to farmers all across the country that uh, either had just great big rains that they were trying to get rid of or had a whole month or two where it rained all the time and it may not have been five inch rains at a time, but they never had a break where the soil dried back out and tile lines were running. We could see those fields on the aerial shots. We could see exactly where the tile lines were in the fields. And you know, on a side note, for farmers that say, well, hey, I had tile put in many years ago. It sure would be nice if I could map out exactly where those lines are. Here's your opportunity. When you have a year like that and you have moisture stress or you have drought stress, fly over the field, take a picture, you can see exactly where every tile line was in the field. And this year, what we saw big time in those areas was the depth of roots. So when we got over those tile lines, we had deeper roots. When we got out halfway in between the tile lines, we had very shallow roots. And right now, this time of year, when we normally would dry out in the summer, that's where it shows up in fields. We see moisture stress in between tile lines and right over the tile lines, things look good. So the way you can challenge yourself to see, well, does that really amount to a huge amount in my field? Watch your combine, watch your yield monitor, try to go right over those tile lines and see what a difference that makes. It's a really big deal for you when we get a wet spring like this. Now it can be too wet where the rivers are out of their banks and there's just nowhere for the water to go. Yes, that definitely happens. I talked to some farmers this spring that said, well, I don't know if tile would have really made a difference for me because the ditches were full, the rivers were full, there's nowhere for the water to go hey, you're absolutely right for that time until the water starts to go down. But once it starts going down, you're gonna recover so much faster. You're gonna be back in the field so much faster than anybody else around you if you've got tile in the ground. One of the great things with the downturn in commodity prices has been One of the great things? One of the great I, things has <laughs> been you have good opportunities to buy now. Drain tile, four inch drain tile, for example, we were, ha we were paying 35 cents a foot, we're paying 25 cents a foot now. It's enormous what it's come down. And then you take a look at farm equipment, land values, all these types of things have come down. It's a buyer's market right now compared to what it was just a couple of years ago. So well, I realize times are a little bit tougher. You got to think about this thing as a very long-term investment. Okay, so the, the money I spent on tile two years ago, um, am I trying to recover all that in two years? Well, actually, maybe I probably will, but I'm just trying to say <laughs> I'm going to get benefit out of it for 50 years. 
hopefully for longer than I'm even alive. We're gonna get benefit in our farm operation from that drain tile in the ground. So I'm just trying to say, look at the big picture here and don't say, oh boy, times are tough and I can't spend any money. You gotta look at what can I do that's gonna give me a good return on investment in the short term and in the long term. And there's still plenty of banks out there that are willing to help you invest money in your ground to make it better long term. One other thing that will take some work is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to do it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. is foxtail barley. Okay, this is a really tough one because it's a perennial weed. And when we think foxtail, we think barley. We're not really thinking perennial, but this is foxtail barley. Okay, so you've got a perennial weed out there. What's the best thing you can do? Well, obviously Roundup is gonna have some good activity. It's just, you gotta remember, we're not trying to kill an annual grass. You look at it right away and you say, oh, grass, whatever, low rate, no problem. But with this thing, it's a perennial, you're gonna need the maximum label rate. So instead of going 22 ounces of Roundup, you might need 44 ounces of Roundup to do a really good job and get in all the way through that root system. Well, the big challenge is with foxtail barley earlier, it really thrives when you have saturated soils. And right back to our drain tile discussion, when you've got drainage issues, foxtail barley is one of those weeds that's going to thrive in those conditions. So if you can control drainage early in the season through May and through June, you just aren't going to see as much foxtail barley and the foxtail barley that's going to come later than that isn't going to produce as much seed as foxtail barley that starts early in the season. So getting drainage improved is one of the first things. The next thing is if you have it out in pasture or rangeland, it's not a safe product to feed to cattle. So yes, if they're grazing, they can pick their way around and they can avoid it. But if you're bailing that grassland or pasture up for hay that you're going to feed the cattle, they can't avoid it when it's mixed in with the rest of their hay. They are going to pick through with their tongue and pull out one kind of grass and not the other. So it's something that can be a little bit dangerous. Uh, you can see animals drooling or, or not feeling great after eating foxtail barley, which is another downside to this particular weed. Not only does it take away from the other grasses that your land can produce, it could also hurt the livestock that's out there. Yeah, but feeding. what are you going to do in pastures? We don't have a lot of great options in round Roundup crops, yeah, we got Roundup. Even in wheat, you can go with Prepare Pre. You can follow with Gold Sky or Power Flex Post, and you'll get halfway decent control. It's not disaster, but what are you gonna do in pasture ground? So in grass and pasture areas, Plateau herbicide is about the only thing that has activity, but since foxtail barley is a perennial, it's not going to get down into that root system and kill everything completely. But you can burn the foxtail barley back, and with good fertility and pasture management, and grazing controls, you can get the other grass to get up and kind of choke it out a little bit. That would be the best solution in those types of situations. Well, once again, this weed, foxtail barley, is very difficult to stop simply because it's a perennial. So our suggestion for you is use a good strong rate of Roundup, not some little rate. You gotta go max label rate. And then when we're talking pastures, we definitely try plateau, but like Darren said, you wanna have good overall fertility, drainage, do rotational grazing, everything you can to to help your pasture choke out that tough weed foxtail barley. That's all time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect only from Case IH.
planning on installing drainage tile this fall or putting in an irrigation system, what if you could get both done at the same time? In today's Iron Talk, we'll discuss subsurface irrigation through drainage tile lines. Irrigation done below the soil surface has been shown to be more efficient than when it's done above ground. In fact, farmers who have been doing it this way report they're using up to 50% less water to attain the same yields. There are a couple of big challenges, though, to irrigating through tile lines. First of all is how to lay the tile out. Your spacing will likely need to be pretty narrow. 15 to 20 feet may be the widest depending on soil type and water needs. The tile should be fairly shallow as well at 2.5 to 3 feet deep. This will result in quite a bit more cost than your normal pattern tiling job. Secondly, you'll need shutoffs to help you overcome any elevation changes throughout the field. Again, this adds a little cost, but the trade-off is greatly increased efficiency of water usage. The big benefits of subsurface irrigation through tile lines, though, include lower water usage, low maintenance and upkeep costs, and tremendous drainage during times of excess rain. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. I wish I could side dress more than just nitrogen. You can. While side dressing is efficient for nitrogen applications, you can also use that opportunity to apply PK and the micronutrients your crop needs. AgroLiquids Calibrate and MicroLink products allow you to nutritionally balance your side dress application efficiently and economically. Let Agriculture Liquid Fertilizer help you make your next crop a bumper crop. For more info, visit agroliquid.com. I've been involved in developing new technologies in agriculture for over three decades. The changing times demanded that we develop new and better equipment. Dry powder applications on seed can only be highly successful if they can be easily, effectively, and accurately applied to the target. That's where our company, Changing Times, and CT applicators come into the picture. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, soybean inoculants, or other dry products. Remember, CT applicators for the changing times. With the success of the Case IH Tiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. How will you secure your farm for the future? The Quasar Chopping Corn Head from Capello USA will help. Our design is focused on efficiency, longevity, and reducing harvest loss, making the Quasar the corn harvest solution to bring your farm forward. With hundreds of units ready for immediate delivery, secure your farm's future today. Do it for your farm. Do it for them. Order now. Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship. American grit. This year's projected U.S. soybean yield will lose over half a billion dollars per point in shrink. Eliminate shrink in your bin. Store grain without lowering moisture content with the AgriDry Bullseye Temperature and Moisture Controller. The Bullseye monitors air temperature and relative humidity, allowing your fans to utilize the weather's natural condition to maintain your grain at market moisture. Fan run times drastically decrease along with the cost of over drying. Eliminate shrink today. Call now. What if instead of running test plots on 10 acres, you could test on 10,000? With Farmers Business Network, the world becomes your plot trial. FBN is the independent farmer-to-farmer -farmer agronomic network. FBN connects real data from tens of thousands of fields and provides you trusted analysis on hundreds of seeds, practices, and field performance to maximize your profits. Find out how your field seeds and practices compare today by joining the FBN community at FarmersBusinessNetwork.com. Just $500 per year for unlimited acres. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us each weekday on Sirius XM Channel 80 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD television program where we'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.
Only 11.6 cents per dollar spent on food in America goes back to American farmers and agribusinesses. Where does the other 88.4% go? And what really raises food prices? Visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org to find out.